Red Bull Racing has built their team around the philosophy of gaining that 1-2% to edge. I'm here to get some insight on where the team find it. Christian. Hi. Thank you for having me here at Oracle Red Bull Racing. Pleasure. Good to see you. Come and have a look around. Well, Christian, it's amazing to be here. You've nearly always been competing at the top level. So can you tell us what the secret is to sustaining your success? Well, I think it's all about, you know, always learning. And so whenever you win a race, you lose a race. You're continually searching for more performance. You're leaving no stone unturned in, in pursuit of that performance. So it's never settling or being satisfied that, you know, that's enough, you know, because ultimately it's never enough. The sport has evolved a lot over the last few years. How have you as people grown though in that time? People are your biggest asset within the business. And you know, the DNA of our team, the culture of our team is you know, perhaps a little different to some of our, our competitors. And so you know, Formula One is a competition. It's not a nine to five job. And each team is competing you know, week in, week out against your counterparts you know, up and down the pit lane. It's such a tough calendar. I mean, the time zone changes that we have, the proximity of the races, and sometimes the calendar is not particularly friendly when you're going from east to west uh, in, in very short time scales. So recovery is everything. You know, Therabody plays its part in that. Recently, we've invested heavily in a state-of-the-art bespoke gym facility, and that's not just for the race crew, that is for the whole business, to make sure they're fit in body, fit in mind and of course incorporating you know, the Therabody's product into that to make sure they're in the best shape possible. Hi Nami. Checo, it's great to see you. I'm happy to be here at your home for the next few years. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Are you going to show yeah. me around? Yeah, definitely. Come in, please. So Checo, what does a Formula One car do to your body? Some races are very demanding on the cardiovascular. Because of the heat, you're losing a lot of liquid and then you're losing strength, concentration. But I think everything starts from the upper body, you know. We have to be pretty strong from the neck, the, the shoulders, the core stability. So Ho, you are obviously a very big part of Sergio's training program. How difficult is it to compile something for a driver in Formula One? First of all, you have to understand what's going on in the car. Mm -hmm. Checo explained it pretty well. We have some general strength, aerobic conditioning, the neck and the upper back and then also core. We're doing a lot of planks. We have to be very complete in all areas. Once you start thinking about your neck, you're, you you're wasting focus. energy and focus, you know, because you have to be thinking about your strategy, your tires, other stuff, you know. Obviously, we decrease the loads before the race, mm -hmm. and then we try to apply what we have in our hands to improve that and make it better. Hello, hey, Dr. Dixon. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So you're the founder of the Therabody products. Yeah. Tell us how that came about. Well, this is the Theragun. I invented the first one in 2008. Okay. To fix myself from an injury that I, was, that I had from a motorcycle accident. A lot of soft tissue damage in my neck and down my right hand. Okay. And I was looking for something that I could use on myself. And that's how this started, was with really just treating injuries. Well, what a way to make a bad situation a very good one, right? right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the dynamic between the three of you and what your working relationship is. Yo and I met, they were introduced to this and they wanted to know a little bit more about how to use it. Okay. From relaxing to performance and then we just keep in touch, you know, to make sure that this guy can do what he needs to do. So you guys all speak the same language then? I wish I spoke Spanish. <laughs> I do not speak Spanish. I meant on the physical <laughs> side. <laughs> In the case of the Theragon, we do an activation protocol before he gets into the car. You know about mm. struggling with your neck, it sounds like. Yes. But, you know, you'd said it's damage. It is. It's micro tears in the muscles. Yeah. So how do you, you know, help them, especially with the neck and the G-force that they struggle with? Well, a lot of what ends up happening is the tension builds up. The muscles get tight. And if his neck is in pain, his forearms are sore. And percussive therapy that we have in Theragun actually releases the tension, activates the nervous system. And as, as a professional driver, Checo knows at some point where he looks at him and says, I'm good. Mm -hmm. That's a signal he gets from his nervous system. 
And if you take tension and increase blood flow, there's probably not going to be as many little micro tears. Okay. So the idea of applying this the way they're talking about mm -hmm. is to get his entire nervous system into a place where he feels really comfortable to get in the car and do what he does without having to think about all those things. Okay. So that's, that's kind of the idea. So we do it uh, previous to the race, then right after, mm -hmm. and then during the week, we try to recover and get him back to where he needs to be to the next race. Which part of your training do you enjoy the most? <laughs> <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> None of it. It's difficult. <laughs> I always do my best. Let's put it away. <laughs> Once you jump into the car and you know that you've done it all, what happens next is not in your control, you know? So by being able to deliver your maximum is where an athlete feels very comfortable. Checo, you obviously have a really big team around you. Yeah. How do they have to prepare for races and what physical aspects do they have to deal with that, you know, are important for your success? Well, they obviously have to stay very sharp throughout the race, you know, because the strategy is changing all the time. So it can be within a second that they have to be ready. Yeah, these guys are amazing. I mean, we started close to three seconds, yeah. thinking it's where it's going to be, and they're already at 2.3 with this huge tire, yeah. so they're impressive. Incredible. Awesome. Now, Dr. Jason, I hear you have an all-access pass today, so how about you go and meet the pit crew? <laughs> I, Hi. That's amazing. What's up, guys? How's it going? So apparently you guys have the world record fastest pit stop. I do. What is it that makes you guys faster than everybody else? At Red Bull, we focus on practice quite a lot. Um, we drill our positions. Every single step, every single hand movement, it's obviously the key to the fastest pit stop. How many calories are you burning in a week? Well, I, I, I don't know about calories, but I can talk about steps. And I say the average day, I'd say is about 18, 18,000 steps a day, roughly, Whoa. for a mechanic who's working at, at full pace. Have you guys ever beaten your own record? I know there's an official record. In practice, yeah. In practice, Have you really? Do, do quite a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just Perfect conditions though, and you're not relying on the driver to drive in to stop <laughs> yeah. his marks. Yeah, that's yeah, the big exactly. Thing. Are there any areas on you, on your bodies that ache or bother you? Lower back. <laughs> Is it? Lower yeah. back? Yeah, because you, you spend a lot of the time Lean when you're working forward. just at, at that, yeah, that angle, then you've taken off wheels very fast using that lower back, so. Yeah, you say that your lower back hurts. My shoulders hurt quite a lot as well, because I'm lying on the floor, you're reaching up for the engine, the gearbox, the fuel cell, yeah. and then also when you're driving, strapping the driver in, you're over the halo, so for me it's, you got long reach all the time. For every week, like that starts to build up. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. right? Yeah, it's painful. Part of the speed from the pit stops come from the consistency with the crew. So if we can minimize the injuries, then that just brings speed. If we lose a person, you really notice it takes a long time to get back up. Yeah, exactly. And people have injuries during the weekend and we've got a physio at the track who will treat us as much as we can. Um, oh, really? Yeah. And That's a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty busy. Second. I need to talk to that guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last year was pretty tense, especially the finale. So when it comes to your pre-race you know, routine, do you have any sort of rituals that get you ready for that level of stress? Um, I have a, a, a routine that I guess that I've, I've followed the last you know, 16, 17 years now. And I'm, it, you know, it borders on superstition as well. You know, I always approach the drivers from their right hand of the car. I'll always shake their hand and look them in the eye before you know, the start of a race. Always the right side. Always on the right side. Okay. Um, I don't know why it's you know it was always the side I got into a car. I would always watch the start of the race from the garage rather than being on the pit wall. So it's a sequence of events that I suppose I'm going through in order to put myself in the right Conscious you know, mindset. State. Performance isn't just an on-track thing. Today we've learned that it's not just the drivers but also the whole team who needs to be fit. What is next for the evolution of this team's performance? I think, you know, we're just pushing to be in better shape, to be leaner, to be fitter, quicker recovery. Mm -hmm. and, and it's by no mistake that we're achieving the kind of pit stop times, the world record. Yes. That isn't by mistake. That's through application, dedication, practice. Easy yeah. peasy. Yeah the right equipment, the right tools, and the right analysis, that then bleeds over, obviously, into the cars that we're producing and designing. And of course, we've recently become an engine manufacturer as well for the new 2026 regulations. So it's a, a constant evolution, you know, on site, in the factory, and at the racetrack.